All right, and we're live. Hey, this feels like 60 minutes for the jam scene. This is a an exclusive. This is an exclusive interview with the man, the myth, the legend, the man who's been running summer camp for what 20 plus years now? 20 plus years. Ian Goldberg, years. summer camps, music director. Now with the, transitioning into the new fest, and that's why we're here to talk. Ian, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Good God, to see you. You guys. look good, yeah. man. You look good. I'm you look good. like I'm jealous. You're looking hot and like I got a little sun. You, you got I know, you could tell you've been hanging out in Mexico, you know. Looking young. That summer camp I'm deposit be- came in. He's like, I'm going to Mexico. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to I had to do research at all the cool uh, Tulum uh, uh, events going on and you know come up with new ideas for what we're doing with the new fest. It was a lot of fun. Did you get inspired from uh, you were at Dead Ahead, right? I was at Dead Ahead. I went to Afterlife, um, Mayan Warrior, uh, a lot of the different things going on down there just to check it out and see what what everyone else is doing. Twenty so, years, twenty years of a festival. All of a sudden, you know, yeah, make the change. To Soul Shine. What inspired yes. it and why did you feel like it was necessary to do it and uh, not have this one just be called Summer Camp? Well, it was it was definitely a challenging uh, a decision. Um, you know, it's it's one of the things one of the things I was really proud about was that we we were still around. You know, a lot of our contemporaries right. um, in the festival world, the all goods. 10,000 lakes, Wakarusa, you know, had all kind of gone to the wayside and, and we were still, uh, around and, 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 and luckily still doing well. Right. Um, but to be honest with you, it, uh, it, it came down to the challenges that have been presented in, in producing festivals post pandemic, right. you know, the world has changed dramatically and, um, kind of thought, you know, we we powered through twenty one, had to move it to August. Right. The it was one of the most difficult things that I had ever done tr- producing the festival that year, um, because you know everyone knows, at, especially at that time, the supply chain issues, the staffing issues, all of the regulations, and you know trying to figure out, you know, do you make everyone wear masks in an outdoor right, <laughs> right. festival? Like, you know, all those silly things that we had to go through. Material costs were just way I've been employing, like hiring, because jo- no one's working really. No one wants to go and work anymore as much outside it, with a group of people, right? Yeah, it's unbelievable. And that that's one of the big impetuses of this change was that, you know, we were during the whole time that we were growing and growing and growing, I tend to want to give back and, and, and make that about be about the, the festival and the event. And so, you know, we just kept adding areas and adding stages mm-hmm. and doing stuff and got to the point where we had nine stages and 180 artists. And that's <laughs> how do you even make, how do you even profit on that? <laughs> right like what right? the fuck i think the answer to that is <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah downsize you have to downsize <laughs> you're answering your own well, question there <laughs> but but to be you know to be frank and honest yes of course the 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 financial end of it comes into into play but what what really drove this decision was a lot more the stress on of course myself but but even more so our team right. you know trying to get the staffing and the equipment and and all the things that are necessary in a small little town in central illinois as you can imagine we're bringing stuff from you know states away yeah like way traveling in (laughs) to do all of this and pre-pandemic we would get inundated with with requests from people oh we want to work your festival what can we do you know and we'd have Mm -hmm. you know a, a, a backlog of people that lined up to work now we're like you know, going through our whole Rolodex, trying to find people to yeah, come man. out and work the festival, you know, uh, qualified people, of course. Right. And and it just, you know, after, like I said, getting <coughs> through it in 21, doing it again in 22, and then, you know, in 23, it just, it wasn't getting a lot better. You know, w- having issues where the, you know, golf cart company shows up the day of the festival and Jesus sorry, Christ. we couldn't get another driver. So you're, you're 50 carts short, Whoa, you know, Jesus. or 
you know, the, uh, not getting the all of the porta johns that we requested and mm -hmm. staffing all all of that. It just it, it was real. It's become really really stressful to build something the size of what summer camp has been in in this little town in central Illinois. You know, we're not in. A yeah, big you're not city in the city. You got to. It's three hours from a major airport. What was the most? Yeah. What was the most random hire did you had to do like last minute? Like, oh, my uncle has a couple tractors. <laughs> or like, what was like any like last minute moments oh. like that? Oh, oh yeah, we've definitely pulled in the uh, the farmers down the road. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Luckily, to get, to, there's to not a big shortage that got stuck or whatever. Dude, yes, fuck sure. all that, dude. That sounds like stress, man. Yeah, and well, and and. For a long time, it was stress and fun, and but post pandemic, with just like I said, how hard all of that has become, it's become stress and and not fun, and and it was getting to that point with with not only myself but our our core team that really right. produces this, to where it just it felt like too much, and and so I realized that we were going to have to make some changes, and you know consolidate parts of the festival to make it more reasonable to find the staffing that we need to find the dressing room trailers that we need, you know, all of those things. And, um, and a big part of that was going to end up being, you know, cutting out some of the stages. Mm -hmm. And I, I was then kind of faced with this challenge of how do I tell people that? Because I, you, you can't just show up to a festival you've been going to for no. a decade and there's always been two main stages right. plus the Starshine, yeah. which is kind of like an electronic main stage, yeah. you know. So almost three main stages, an additional like four side stages plus that VIP are also and big. Red and those and are everything. big too. Those are all big too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Those, are, those would be main stages at smaller festivals. <clears throat> so you know, I was struggling with how do we do all of that and and not make it so that we have to spend the next year doing what I call negative messaging you know where we just have to keep being like right. hey remember we're cutting this out we're cutting that out and yeah. and everything and one night it dawned on me that you know if, if we don't call it summer camp and we we go with a, a new concept and a new theme it also achieved some other goals that i had of trying to figure out how to integrate um some of some of the more important elements of what had been our soul shine um uh program into you know elevate them and make them a bigger part of the festival right and it uh but it all it, it made it that instead of having to do all of that kind of messaging it could be about hey come check out something new and right right keep your mind open be ready for newness but everything that you still love about summer camp will be there as well yeah they and that was the decision yeah and you know you might as well just rip the Band-Aid off right away. Mm -hmm. And because people are going to shit on it on a change no matter what you do, bro. And if you don't know, change. If you don't change or change, <laughs> They're gonna someone's yeah. going to shit on it. Yep. You know, so it's like you might as well just rip the Band-Aid off right away and kind of build this new dynamic of like, you know, this is what it's going to be like. And like for you to be honest like that, it's uh, it's it's pretty beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'll and clap like to said, you. It, Let's go. It, it, it Way to go. Opened up the door. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it, what I really like about it is, is it opened up the door to, um, you know, I feel like in the world that we're in at the moment with all the craziness going on, that festivals, you know, offer a reprieve, right? And they offer a chance for us to, to escape and have fun. And But I think it's important to do that still with intentionality and with purpose right. and and to you know utilize it as an opportunity for personal growth or friendship growth meet new people all of those things but you know hopefully the idea is is what you take from the festival then helps fuel the rest of your of your um life experiences for the next year right and awesome by by going the soul shine route I feel it, it it was a vehicle for us to try and encourage that intentionality, that the gratitude for what we do have and, and what um, what life does give us in the way of festivals, of music, right. of art and, you know, to to really express our our appreciation for all of those things. 
And uh, so the more and more I thought about that and thought about how I could use this as a way to really shift attention to that, um, the more excited I got about it. And you yeah. know, I, I shared that with our our uh, partner bands, Mo and Humphreys, as as you know, mm-hmm. and got got very positive responses. And I think we all just kind of felt like, hey, this is a, this is a good time to move forward with some changes and and make things, you know, a little a little fresher and still have the hopefully everything that everyone loves about summer camp, the community, family, the music, um, be a part of it, but but be able to add more to it. So that's what we're that's what we're shooting for. Yeah. I I hate people who don't think <laughs> evolution is key well the thing is they what? would have complained even if he didn't change yeah right, you know right, right, I, mean? right. So it's like, I have a question right. what's your favorite new change to the festival like what's the thing you're most excited about that's a change in this year's edition of the festival um well by far what i was just talking about the, the use utilizing the the name of soul shine which you know it's it's spelled a little bit different and has mm-hmm. a little bit different of a, a you know and and the idea of the of the reverie um, I really loved that word when I stumbled upon it yeah. uh, as a way to express that, you know, it is really kind of a dream state that we're in that weekend, right? It's, a, right. it's yeah. an escape from our, our natural everyday life. But by putting soul shine into the reverie, it's like, okay, but let's do that with intentionality, you know, a kind of a more of um, one of the Google uh, definitions that I saw for reverie um had the the idea of it being almost a a daydream like state but with me, you know in a meditation state and mm-hmm. and hopefully although we're all having a lot of fun and you know there's especially at a at a, a frasco show there's a ton of partying going on yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> comment <laughs> you know, all of that but hope- Hopefully, we're also utilizing it as a chance to set our intentions for what we want to be doing post festival and taking that joy and that gratitude into our lives and and hopefully making our lives better overall. Totally. You know. With that being said, you know, community. We talk about community and stuff. Community. Yeah. What What are the things that are staying the same in that aspect of community? Are there going to be? Is there camping still? Is um, are we going to get fucking kickball back? You know, like, like what's like, what's the stuff that's staying around versus what's changing? Well, the, um, yes, a hundred percent on the camping, all the camping layout and, and everything is staying the same and huh. we're not making any changes, you know, which, uh, which will require people, you know, for example, to be checking wristbands, getting into to stage areas or anything like that. As it's always been with summer camp, once you're through that gate, you're in the campgrounds and and festival grounds are all integrated together, which is um, what I think is one of the the best things about the festival as opposed to some other festivals that I love. um, But, you know, where where it's very different than that. Um, So that that element's all definitely still the same. Kickball, you were supposed to pick up the mantle. And <laughs> it's true, you did. I did. I, I, I fucked up. I forgot. I forgot the ladder fool. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but yes, the uh, you know we uh, that is a good example though. Like field day, you know, which I is is a fun part of the festival where we do all of the color war type games, the yeah. dodgeball and um, uh, 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 the pie eating contests and and all that kind of stuff that'll all still be a part of it on on the Saturday. Yeah. Um, the kickball game, we'll we'll figure out who will run it and who will be the captain. I'll probably try to recruit uh, Stasic yeah. to get back involved. I'll, I'm gonna yell at that fool like, stop! Be, I, I get it, but now like Umphreys isn't doing as many sets this time, right? Is Umphreys and Mo that, still doing the same amount? That, so that is uh, one of the changes. Uh, no, Umphreys will be doing. Um, Fewer sets uh, on on over the course of a two to three day um, period. Actually, they'll it'll be over two days um, on this one. Mo will be do both will be doing at least one day fewer of of oh. performances. So, so it's only two days instead of three. All three days. Cool. With that, that's cool. So two out of three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Stacy can fucking play some kickball. Yeah, he can go to Let's bed early. Yeah. Let's Get be up. real. Stacy, I know you're listening to this. It's it's time to man up, buddy. I know mm-hmm. you have kids. I know you have doom flamingo and shit, but 
You have two more sets that you're not doing. So man up and play some fucking kickball. Just go to if bed Jordan early and get can up. Come out of fucking retirement. You can come <laughs> yeah, out of retirement. yeah, yeah. Exactly. We'll put a different. You we'll put a different number on you. Joe Flacco can get in the playoffs. You yeah, can if do Joe kickball. Flacco can make kickball. the playoffs, Ryan Stakes yeah. can play some goddamn kickball. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, great. So, what about the stages? What stages are are gone? So uh, the Sunshine Main Stage uh, will not be coming back this year, and the Starshine Stage is being uh, is also going away. However, we're we're changing the campfire stage mm. to be elevated to the size of stage that Starshine was. Oh, oh cool. okay. So just three stages. Uh, campground still the campground stage. Well, we'll have the Illumination Woods. Right. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's oh, yeah. Right. That's yeah, sick, yeah. too. That's sick. Yeah. yeah. So four stages. Two. I just dated um, myself calling it the campground well, stage. Well, <laughs> then you have the Red Barn and the VIP. So right. basically, yes. You're only dropping two stages. <laughs> four stages. What? You're only dropping two stages. Exactly. That's, that's well, Man, every, no. No. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, because we're also taking out Soul Shine. Soul Shine, yeah. Oh, okay. So, that's the tent. That's the, Oh, the yeah. Tent. Where they had all the art and like and, the late nights in the middle kind oh, of. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's what they did the so late the, night hang. Yeah, Les Special did that yeah. cool cover set. That was dope. Exactly. Yeah. So the um, all of the workshops and activations that were in Soul Shine are going to be moved into the Soul Patch. We built kind of a really cool um, natural amphitheater using the sustainable building techniques that we're encouraging within Soul Shine. And and in the soul patch area, made that the um, kind of workshop space for for all of that stuff. But there won't be a there won't be bands playing or yeah. in, in that. Is that like in the same area where the soul shine tent used to be? Um, so it's right across the road from there. Okay, like in cool. the woods. In yeah. the woods, yeah. Okay, I get it. Yep. Can we still so gamble? Three, can we still gamble our hats <laughs> and our and our uh, belt buckles and our cigarettes at the ri I'm rim very rack? Happy to say that Frick Frack will be uh, will certainly be a part of. The Is that Let's fucking go! I love We're Frick Frack. Let's go, Frick Frack. <laughs> oh man, I was uh, heavily intoxicated once, and I tried to uh, bet my shoe. I was really I wanted this like fucking blackjack weird. Yeah, blackjack. What was it? I wanted like this weird rabbit. Like taxidermy rabbit, and I lost it. And my tour manager had to come and say, "Can you have his shoe back?" <laughs> and the guy's <laughs> like, "Well, what are you gonna give me?" <laughs> I wouldn't have given yeah, it to you. So I, I gave him, yeah. I gave him my belt Since or something. Since when do you wear shoes? You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. I love that. Frick Frack's but still there. Um, what's <laughs> the difference in the music? It's basically kind of like you ever seen Knocked Up, where he's like, "We don't want to call you fat. We just want to tighten you up. We, tighten, just, we just need to tighten, tighten it up. Bit. Just right. tighten it up tighten a little up. bit." <laughs> yeah, it's basically that. It's basically still a good share of local yeah. artists, though. But still, not as I thought it was going to be way. So, I thought you're just going to go down to two stages. No, um, and to be a hundred percent honest, that was a part of the equation for me. Was I realized that we could still do um, a lot of the, you know, we could still have all of the tame top tier headliners and all of the, you know, um, mid tier stuff. Um, and just consolidate it uh, to be on on those the the two the campfire stage and and moonshine moonshine mm, will yeah. be the main stage yeah cool um, I was also able to get the city to work with us and we now have a, a four a.m. Uh, curfew Whoa, for that's cool the the whole festival um, previously it was two a.m. for for the main stages and four a.m. for the side stages now it's four a.m. for everything so oh, great. by doing that basically it'll you know, the way the music is going to lay out is going to be that on the campfire stage, it'll start out like it did on Starshine with bands, mm -hmm. and then it'll transition into electronic. Oh, okay. So there'll be electronic on the campfire stage when there's band, when the headlining bands are playing on Moonshine, and then uh, when the headlining electronic artists on Moonshine will be late night. And so once that transitions, then campfire will transition back to bands. And oh. so basically you'll you'll be able to go back and forth. But one of the beauties of that too is is um there's gonna be a lot less uh overlap between artists. Okay. So you you'll be able to get back and forth and see 
um, a lot more of the music and not have to make decisions about, oh, yeah, that was always you know, tough. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go to this or go to that. Yeah. yeah. And like you could, you know, because like you could now you could put like a cool DJ at like two to four a.m., you know, the late night thing with the lights and stuff. And yeah, exactly. Sick. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. So yeah. people, I, and if kind of saves walking. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like you're walking, you're running around, you go see Humphreys till two or whatever, then you have to fucking run your ass to yeah, the moonshine to or moonshine or, or camp. So Catch it's the like, last half a mo. I feel like it's kind of like, yeah, we're like, you know, it's like, because I, I always like, my fucking knees are just killing me after <laughs> by Monday morning, dude, because I'm running to eat, trying to see all my homies. And, you know, I got all homies in different scenes. It's like, it's, I'm running what over there. talking about, dude? You're always on your golf cart with there 15 go. girls there it is. running. Like you don't hey, walk someday, anywhere. Someday. I'm gonna go with Ian on this. One. No, but I like I like rock. But I always like walking around, seeing the people. I'm like you know, I like being yeah, the mayor of that too. stuff. You know, like hey, what's up? Kissing babies and shiz. What about um VIP lounge special sets? What's going on there? You guys doing anything for that? A hundred percent. Hell yeah, that will be back and uh, already have some really uh, really cool fun things lined up in there. Um, and you know, again. Yeah having a, a little bit uh what do i want to say less less packed or condensed um schedule is going to oh. allow us to do some some other cool um, yeah. item in the in the vip and and potentially in the red barn um because there'll be more little openings for us to do fun stuff like that yeah and like you know it's like a lot of people get to miss miss a lot of the vip stuff because there's so much shit going on yeah all the time and I, some yeah. of those VIP sets are the coolest. I know. know. Some, uh, some of those. Are, some of them have, yeah, just been unreal. Like, you know, really cool collabs, a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. And, and that's what we're going to be encouraging a lot of that. The the collab thing is a big part. Um, we we started a, a tradition last year that we're, we're certainly going to um, pull forward and, and continue with this year. Um, with the the Mo and Humphreys collab, which oh, yeah. was was just incredible. Oh yeah, and, and, and with looking at, then with Willie Nelson, that was so fucking awesome, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. I started yeah, crying totally. when I saw Bayless look at Willie Nelson. I was like, this is so special. That was spe <laughs> right? that was so special, dude. I seen Willie, dude, just on the summer camp stage, like just felt right, you know. And it just like yeah, and especially for the last one of stamping summer camp. Mm -hmm. exactly and a lot of people don't probably put together that willie was the first like you know i guess you would say maybe mainstream successful you know or or you know, non just jam band right. successful headliner that, that right. i actually put on the festival yeah um that really kind of also elevated the festival to another level so it was really cool having him back right. and you know in that in that role and for the for the last of the of the summer camp um branded events and and again as i said in the statement when we announced it you know it's not like summer camp has completely gone away one we're we're certainly using the the summer camp presents moniker so that people right. create that and the one thing i love about it is is now the option is always there that maybe at some point on an anniversary year or something we go back and do a full-blown festival and we you know summer camp and we bring back the stages and we you know do a whole nother right. thing just to make it cool for that time you know or whatever so there's it's, it's going to open up a lot of uh a lot of ways for us to play with things and just make it fun. So I'm excited. Fun, yeah. is, fun is the point. Yeah, it's a festival. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> and also, like, how can you create fun when you're all stressed out? You know, so when you're stressed out with the whole fucking thing, it start becoming not fun. And like, that's the reason why you wanted to do a music festival in the first place, to have fun. That's you. You hit that right on the head because, mm -hmm. you know, that was my challenge was I found myself stressing out about trying to figure out you know, labor or, or equipment vendors and stuff and not being able to really be thinking about, okay, well, what else can we do to make this experience awesome for the people who are coming? Right. It was like, how do we make this experience actually happen, you know, instead? And it's a lot more fun when you can uh, be creative and be spending your, your energy on looking for ways to do fun stuff instead of just having to make sure that you have the porta johns you need and, right. and that kind of thing. Cause that that's half the you know if you start making it sterile, 
then people mm-hmm. are going to f- fucking hate yeah. on that, too. Also, you don't want the yeah. boss stressed out. That trickles down to everybody uh, else in the festival. Yeah. It messes up the whole vibe for everything, I think. Have, you, that, ever had a, have you ever had a fucking stressed out boss? Yeah. I fucking hate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel you. Well, and... And and really though, you know, it was feedback I was getting from my team because they were getting stressed out too. <laughs> right. You know, like, chill out when <laughs> it, it, people are canceling because of you know they got sick or they got yeah. this or whatever, and it just it just stresses out the whole team. And now I think it's going to be a lot more manageable. And and again, let us really all myself and the whole team refocus on how do we make this the best experience possible for the people yeah. who are coming. Yeah. You know, instead of stressing about all those li- other little things that were just really difficult. Yep. Right. Um, the devil's in the details kind of thing, you know, but you don't want too many details. <laughs> I want to talk a little yeah. inside baseball here. Okay. Um, what's it like when you, because there's like 2,000 fucking bands on the summer camp. When you're pulling out those offers, do you do, do you give out all the offers on one day? So it's like, like, how does that work? Like, I'm, your email no, must be fluttered, dude. No, and and it's interesting that uh, that you you uh, you ask that because uh, I'm I'm still from the the old school of of festival booking. You know, I of course know a lot of other festivals, and especially in the electronic world. I mean, the way that electronic festivals um, approach, you know, booking and building out the schedule is very different in the sense that most of them, I think, you know build out their ideal lineup in, in, in all of the scheduled slots, send out all those offers, get as much as they can confirmed, and then kind of go back and, and mm. do it. Whereas, you know, I still do what I, I, I consider the old skill way, I guess, which is I start from the top with my headliners and mm-hmm. then, you know, figure out who I can get confirmed there and then build it out. Because to me, it's building a whole, um, you know, it's building the whole picture. It's like a painting, you know, the, right. the, mm-hmm. the, the lineup that we put up out ends up being uh, our, our finished, you know, piece of art. And um, so a lot of it for me, who I want to put in those earlier slots is determined by who's going to be headlining at the end of the night, you know, and that kind of thing. And it, it kind of builds backwards. So I don't... Uh, I kind of wait until I have all the the pieces, you know, from the the top done to then build down, and that it it takes me longer that way, and um, it's it's harder and harder in 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 today's festival world to to make that work. But I still think it's a very important part of right. what is summer camp and and has been that that feel and that brings up. Uh, uh, a, a couple of I had some really big arguments this year because one of the things that's becoming really frustrating for for me as a festival um, producer and and curator is the the lineup arguments the billing arguments that I know oh everyone starts yeah it's like how big's your dick you agents know? that's agents right. <laughs> well and and what I was trying to to point out to agents is what it what it's really doing is because now what it's a, about for most of the agents and and artists is not wanting to be below or you know a, a ex artists because they don't want to see they don't want the big festivals like Lollapalooza or Coachella oh, or yeah, these yeah. other things to see it and say oh well there you're under but those festivals aren't in our market, you know, right, and I get right. these, these responses from agents being like, Oh, we have to be above so-and-so because our numbers in Boston and Denver and right. LA or this. And I'm like, what's that have to do with Chillicothe, Illinois? <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, yeah, we're in Chillicothe, like- bro. Not LA. Yeah. Calm right. it the fuck down. <laughs> and, and so what happens is they don't let me curate the lineup for our market for who mm. we're trying to go to because they're worried about impressing live nation. Right. And, and it's basically allowing live nation and these other, you know, and the big corporate festivals to like homogenize lineups. And now when you look at lineups across the country, they all look the same because right. everyone's fighting to make sure that it doesn't appear like they're below any artist right. anywhere in the country. And the reality is, yeah, in central Illinois, you know, there are artists from Chicago, for example, exactly. who are 
much bigger than an artist who, yeah, maybe nationally is much bigger. But right. on our lineup, that that Chicago artist should go first. Yeah. Right. And the the agents and everyone just argues and argues and argues about it. And it's it's frustrating. And it's something that I hope as an industry we we learn to address because otherwise every lineup across the country just ends up looking exactly the same. Yep. It's already a lot of the same artists and then they're in the same order and the same thing. Yeah. And it's all determined by the live nation buyers, you yeah. know, because it's, it's all built around impressing them to make sure that you're getting on their festival. And that fucks and that, up and that fucks up independent promoters. So every, and like now then all those guys aren't gonna be able to make festivals because so it's basically just going to be, a monopoly for festivals and live nation and AEG or whatever are just going to be the ones holding the festivals. If we can't like kind of play, play in the same play on the same play park, or whatever they call sandbox. it. Sandbox. Sandbox. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, I mean, to be honest with you, that's a big part of the, like I said, the, the impetus for the change in general of the branding and name, you know, is, is there's so many of those corporate festivals, like in every city, and and everything now that are eating up those resources so that it makes it harder and harder for right. independents like us to to compete because even get a stage or sound system you know like but that's hard yeah yeah exactly and and live nation or or you know those those entities can go and just say hey i'm gonna you know for ar people or something that you know used to travel from festival to festival with independence now they just go and say hey we're going to book you for the whole summer but you work for us you don't right. work for any of those, right, right, those right. other festivals yeah and it's taking all those resources out of the, the the market for us and making it harder and harder to uh to compete and keep up so you're like bernie definitely. sanders of the of the festival promoters <laughs> <laughs> let's go well, goldberg 2024 <laughs> baby <laughs> goldberg 24 <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be. I, I see them dropping like flies. All these independent promoters, all these independent festivals are dropping like flies. Especially There's, since the pandemic. So, especially since the pandemic. It's just too, it's hard. You can't afford it anymore. Yeah, look, I, when I, when we started summer camp, I think we did 1,800 people like the, the first year. And, you know, we had the ability to grow it over the course of, you know, eight or 10 years to get to the point where we were a, a larger scale festival. There's no way we could do that in in today's market. Like, yeah, right. you know, no. we have to go in and and be putting up big money for the artists and big money for all of the production elements, big money for all of the staffing and all that. And there's just no way that in today's world a festival like summer camp could ever start and get off the ground. Right, right. And it's it's uh, I I think that that's really sad. And um, that is sad. You know, I hope again. Ultimately, as an industry, I think we're going to have to address that or we do just end up with, you know, those those corporate festivals. And I'm not saying that there's 100 percent a place for those corporate festivals. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, of course, to be there. You need that, too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Someone's got to be Home Depot. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. but that doesn't mean we can't have mom. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't mean we can't have mom and pop. Yeah, hardware old, stores. old Bill's hardware. Yeah, shack. but those are both great and they're both useful. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because you're gonna go to the mom and pop store when you need help and you need someone that actually knows what exactly. they're talking about yeah. to, to help you do what you're doing. Yep. And But if, if you allow the Home Depot to wipe them out, then you're really kind of screwed because... Yeah. Yeah, you can get whatever you want at Home Depot, but you don't have anyone to to. Yep. Also, Home Depot. Can, also, Home Depot can now price things however they want because there's no even less competition. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just basically uh, a challenge. It's just supply and demand. A Andy. challenge us independent <laughs> uh, festival promoters face, and yeah. you know I'm obviously friends with uh, a lot of the the others that are out there, and yeah. I think we all feel it. You know, yeah, totally. And it's not like they're the enemy; they have a boss too. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, yeah, yeah. It's like it's just, uh, yeah. It's how the game works, and uh, we just want to we want to keep you guys around because you know it's you are my childhood. You know, my the first <laughs> festival I fucking ever got booked on was me too. Actually, I got an email from Ian Goldberg. Brad Raffinod was my agent, and he's like, "You wouldn't believe this, but someone wants to book you at a festival." <laughs> 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 and uh, here I am now, ten years or fifteen years later. So I played on the former campfire stage, and it was just like a. Cement landing. You built a lot that, of careers. Like I remember, big gigantic. Mm -hmm. They're playing on milk cartons. Mm -hmm. Look at them now. Yeah, they're doing a three D fucking are, show. Yeah, they're they're. I I 
I'm pretty sure they're the first act that started on on it was it was a trailer stage yeah i was i was at that side actually on it, i was too um that they played on their first time and went all the way from that to you know now headlining our main stage it's, right it's pretty pretty incredible it's dope but what you know the avert brothers played on that stage yeah. um there uh yeah the, you know lots of lots of Big artists now started on those smaller stages and Cherub. came up. Cherub. Cherub's a good one. I think. Cherub. They yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you're condensing it, are you going to be able to do another weekend of it and and kind of play with the idea? I'm, this is just me analyzing your brain, so I have no idea. But f- yeah. when I think of this, I'm like, oh, he's he's downsizing, like, so it can be so like it can be containable year? to do two in a year. Oh, okay. Or am I just uh, just overthinking like I always do? Well, I don't see us doing anything uh, as a second weekend of of a summer camp or Soulshine style event. Um, but yes, we have played around with you know it does give us the option to maybe you know do something either in the country space or a more like straight oh, rock based thing or something something that could ideally be. Um, compatible but but different you know looking for a different clientele because i we're we're not big enough to to try and split the crowd and you know i think even electric forest being a a good example of of that where you know like it 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 it, it becomes a, a real challenge going over two weeks um and doing two weekends and i think you know the fact that uh coachellas and and things like that have been successful with it is great but i think you have to really be at that scale in order to make something like that work going after you know again i'm in it it blows my mind really because i grew up in in central illinois you know like i grew up in pekin which is you know a half hour from chillicothe and so for me the fact that we have something at the scale of what summer camp became um right there in in little old central Illinois is pretty yeah. mind blowing still. Couldn't, couldn't imagine and, yeah. that when you were a kid, probably. Yeah. yeah. What were the farmers it. like when you first pitched them? Hey guys, so check it out. We're actually gonna throw a festival in this area. Were they kind of like were they bitching about it at first? Or they were they cool about it? The, the farmers is that yeah, just like the neighborhood. Like when you're like, because uh, it was a quiet community, like you said. You know, it's probably it was yeah, probably hard, pulling no, teeth to get. It it, it it was a challenge. You know, we at one point we were we were asked not to come back, um, and you know, I think it was in 2008 or 2009 or something like that when we had grown to where we were at like 10,000 people, and all of a sudden this Chillicothe, this town of 6,000 people has more people coming in than live there. Mm. And, you know, and there were some people who of course were opposed to that. Um, and luckily a lot more who weren't because then when, when it happened that we were asked not to come back, the local chamber of commerce got involved and started a petition Uh and it very quickly became clear that the overwhelming support that the community had for us being there, because, you know, Kroger, as as most people know, has a store right next to the uh, to the festival site, and you know Kroger's the biggest grocery store chain in the U.S. Right. And on Memorial Day weekend, that store was their top selling store across. Yeah, you're the building country. economy. Yeah, it's like you're having you know? economy. And yeah, and so you know, once w- when it got out that we were being told that you know they didn't want us back the people rose up and started yeah. a petition and, yeah. and that changed around very quickly. Yeah. And we were sent another letter saying, please come back. And, and yeah. so, uh, you, you should know, have played we, hard again. We nah, did. we'll think about it. You should play, you should play, yeah. be the hot girl. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Fuck it. We might move to Carbondale. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this was, this was long before festival culture was what it is now. Right. Yeah, right. Now festivals are, are accepted. And we were kind of, Certainly for Central Illinois, we were on the forefront of that, and people just didn't know what to make right. of it. You know, all these hippies coming in and getting crazy for a weekend. They were like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> right. That's but like, now they embrace it. The city yeah. loves us. The 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 um, everybody there is is, is extremely um, 
um, supportive and helpful in every way. Like I said, when I proposed this idea and went to the city and said, hey, the only way I can really make this work is if you give me two more hours on the main stage, like it, it took nothing for them to turn it around and say, hey, yeah, we'll we'll make that happen for you and stuff. So um, luckily that that support is is really there now in yeah. a great way. Let's go. Hard to turn down that revenue. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, it's like Plus once the, money comes involved, like oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 well, you're fine. There's got to be a lot of you know just tax, general tax revenue coming in for the. But you know that government. like old grandma yeah. who's had yeah. that right. house for like seventy years is the only one fighting yeah, it, right, you right. know. <laughs> well, yeah, and and but all the like restaurants and yeah. grocery stores, right. the hotels, stores, the hardware store, <laughs> there in Chillicothe. I mean. Right. They they do record numbers on yeah. that weekend. So. I know. You and, gotta and have I'm it. thrilled to be able to be a, a support like that. Yeah. In addition to which, as a part of our Soul Shine, um, you know, we've over the last decade, uh, we have what we call our community contribution fund. And I believe we're somewhere up around half a million dollars or something that like that now that we've contributed to the local um Wow. to local charities there in Chillicothe, the wrestling team, the 4th of July fireworks that they do. And, um, right. That's you know, cool. three of those different kinds of organizations that every year we, we make donations to from our community contribution fund. And, you know, that, uh, for, a, for a town, the size of, of Chillicothe, it, it, a lot. it makes yeah. an impact. Yeah, I agree. Wow. I'm, I'm learning a lot. Um, that's not a drop in a bucket. Before we go outside. into, I have a couple, I picked, I, I, you know, we did that post where people ask questions before we yep. do that. I want to, before I ask some of these are quite ridiculous, to be honest. Um, <laughs> a lot of jam band Illuminati stuff going on in here. Um, <laughs> is there going to be single day tickets or is it, or two day tickets? Like what's the ticket issue this time? So we, we do offer single day tickets on the Sunday. We call it our Sunday one day ticket. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, there will be still what we call our heritage headlining slot, which is, you know, what Willie Nelson, Tom Petty, oh, cool. Zach Brown band, um, Steve Miller band. Oh, all, you know, year, yeah. those are the artists we've had in that slot over the years. Yeah. We're still, um, we still haven't announced who that's going to be for this year. And, but we'll put the single day tickets on sale when, when we announce that slot. So there will be more headliners being added. Ooh. There's there's still some fun stuff to come. <laughs> Here we go. See, he never full he never shows his full deck. I, this is why I appreciate about you, Ian. Like, boom, you'll slam you you put your dick out there, put like a hundred bands, and then a month later, oh, here's another thirty bands, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> like what, this man? Oh, here's Steve Miller band. Yeah, yeah, here's enjoy. Steve, yeah, yeah, I might you know I might, I might fuck around, find out, I might get like Trey band. or something. Yeah, yeah here's yeah. Trey band. Here you go. Um, all right, you ready for some fan questions? Yeah, let's see what we got. Okay, first question is why is Andy Frasco not on the festival? <laughs> Is he? Why is Andy Presco what? I Not answer, on the festival. I can answer that. What is it? He took another offer. Yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I got booked for a year, so I'm sorry, guys. I can't make it out there. But um, I will be there in spirit. I will be there. Um, I'll be the ghost of crowd surfing past. <laughs> I'll be I'll be there. Um, someone face someone FaceTime me if there's no there's never Wi-Fi over there. Never mind. But I will be there. I will send my love, spirit, my kisses. Build like a doll of yourself. A doll that I can crowd like surf. a voodoo doll. No, that I can crowd surf like a full a life crowd size surfing doll. I yeah. love this. Yeah, I love it. There you go. You Some, can have that can we idea. Do a blow up Andy Frasco. Yeah, something that wouldn't be that expensive. Then they can they can crowd surf it at Umphreys or. Whatever. I got a lot of haters though, so I, that thing would probably be destroyed. You don't us. have a haters. And then we can sell it online as a sex doll. There you go. Oh, uh, just put a hole in it, Ian. Andy's, Let's go. Andy's gonna, <laughs> Let's go. Andy's gonna buy the sex doll. <laughs> I'm just want to have sex with myself. You buy my. You buy your own sex doll of yourself. <laughs> um. Okay. So another question: Is the illumination wood still going to be like a a thing? Is it going to be like? Are you going to pimp it out? Absolutely. Hell that's yeah. that's one of the areas that people can expect some uh, some you know uh, additions and and fun cool stuff going on into um, that you know taking out some of the other production allows us to to create more in that space. So uh, I'm I'm really excited about what will be happening there. Cool. I love that. Um, this is this is from 
Another guy, from, his name's Afro47. Will the Nitrous Mafia be involved <laughs> in Soul Shine? You would never say that. <laughs> no, I just wanted, I'm curious. Absolutely it, not. Good. Yeah, there good, we go. Good. Thank you. No Nitrous this year, people. Well, no, I didn't say that. No I Mafia. He said no <laughs> Nitrous no Mafia. mafia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard this crazy story about the I Nitrous have, Mafia. I have no doubt that the individuals who sneak in their own stuff will yeah. still figure yeah. out. Yeah, they'll they figure out. They are not part of that. I have group. no, no But yeah, that's that. Not, that is not a summer camp situation. Disclaimer, Ian is not <laughs> I, I had a conversation with... What's, what was that big festival in like kind of near West Virginia? Um, what? All good? All good. Yeah. All good friends. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Oh. Back in the day, they it was like some crazy story where they just like couldn't get all these nitrous mafia out there. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. But you're you're yeah. in Illinois. If they really want to come out, they gotta they gotta haul that. We bitch. better not talk about them too. All much. Right, we're, we're done talking about it. <laughs> okay. Um so we, we answered the two day festival question. We answered the no headlining ones. Um this one is kind of this one's weird. I like this one. It's kind of jam band Illuminati. <laughs> Is Ian Goldberg in the Jam Band Illuminati? <laughs> and will Goose be part of the rebrand? <laughs> well, they are playing well, the Well, Goose, Goose is clearly a part of the rebrand. Uh, they're, yeah. they're uh, again, playing the festival. and um, you But know, like, are they going to be like a Mo and Umphreys type of sitch? If I have my way, the answer is yes. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love to see it. We the love to see it. The um, yeah. It's, it's a... In, in their court to see how that continues and and I think I think they really enjoyed their their game of duck duck goose back in t- 2019 so what? they they had to come back in yeah. and see what what we were doing now and uh Hold on what's they, duck duck goose? You don't know duck duck goose? Really? I know the game but oh. what's that do with goose? So in 2019 they were playing in that little tent the Soul Shine oh, festival yeah. tent and we got hit with lightning and had to shut down the stage and so they moved down to the to the uh, ground and started playing acoustic. And then they put together a game of Duck Duck Goose and were playing Duck Duck Goose with the <laughs> with the fans that were hanging out goose, and goose, with goose. them during. The, oh, I the love thing. it. That's Peter's awesome, so, so nerdy. I love that dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Okay, a um, couple more questions. Couple more questions. You already answered. So Mo and Umphreys are going to do a collab set. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and we'll be seeing more dream sets or collaboration members, of other bands and side pro- projects. That's certainly a, a part of the goal. Um, cool. We're still working some of that out. You know, as you know, as an artist, it's it's not always even even though the artists may really love the idea, the logistics part of that can be difficult. So, but we have some really cool ideas we're working on and trying to make happen in that space. Well, that's that's exciting. Think really neat. Um, any new cool light up areas? Like, are you going to like pimp out another area since it's going to be more condensed? Are you going to like pimp out a little campsite area? Like what else are you going to pimp out? Yeah. So of course, taking out those big festival field staging areas gives us some space to play with. And, uh, we were working on some really cool ideas to, to yes, bring, um, that festival experience out into, more of those areas as well. So nothing uh, nothing firm to talk about at the moment, but some really good ideas that are cool. coming together. I'm excited. Um, will there be a nonprofit row? Yes, absolutely. Um, in elevating the soul shine element to the to be the the core of the festival, of course, the, the not-for-profits have always been a part of that from the beginning, and they will even be, uh, they'll be even more focused on that that part of it. Is that important to you? A hundred percent. It's you know why why I've uh, I feel like we do the festival again is that that intentionality. You know, right? Um, when I first went to my first festival, which was uh, the very first Lollapalooza's, <laughs> um, when Jane's Addiction, who right. was my favorite band at the time, announced that they were going to break up, and the last thing they were going to do was this tour of a festival called Lollapalooza. I like went on tour with it and, you know, went, uh-huh. uh, I went to like five or six of the dates and going in and seeing, you know, the, um, the activation around at that time, it was the Gulf war was going on and, you know, they were sharing information about our addiction to oil and our, you know, like 
and what the costs of war and everything were. Yeah. It just really motivated me to say, hey, if I do this with my life, I can be doing something fun and that I enjoy, but also hopefully makes a difference. And that's what we're trying to to keep alive with Soulshine and even put more emphasis on it. Yeah. Because even if it is a business, I mean, it's still music. And it's still, yeah. you know, it's like we forget that sometimes that you how you know we could talk about money and stuff in the business side, but we got to actually take care of the community and we got to raise awareness to you know everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's business with a purpose. You know, right. that's that's the goal. Yeah, that's what we're, we're what and we're fun for. with a purpose. Uh, yeah, true. Will the water <laughs> fill up stations be? in this is damn. This is a, this guy knows his festival um will the water fill up stations be the same as last year hmm i don't feel qualified to to answer that one because that's my site uh, that would be my site director's uh, All right, cool. call i know he's working on um, various different setups and changes i i don't know specifically what the uh what the uh water fill up station uh changes may be okay so Good so, question. Can't give that was a good answer. question. That's a nice. I, I I respect that question. <laughs> that's a deep. That's a deep dig. Yeah, it's a dig. That's. I a, will say that that's it's a something that we we constantly talk about on our site um, calls is you know how to make bathrooms, water, all of that more accessible and and easy you know easy to get to for um, uh, for for everyone. I got a question moving forward. Um, that was the last ones that I, 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 uh, there was a bunch of questions, but a lot of them, I think we answered, um, moving forward with soul shine. Is it going to be more, uh, EDM based or is it going to still have a jam compartment? Cause you know how like, you know, EDM is really taken over in that community. Right. How, how are you looking for, how are you thinking five years ahead with the fest, with the evolution of soul shine? Honestly, I think with the evolution of Soulshine, I see it moving um, even with, if, if anything, with more emphasis on on the live live band thing because I see that right now making a, a, a strong um, a strong rebound overall. Definitely, yeah, um, right. You know, bands jam are bands back, are fucking popping is, again. Bands are back in yeah. general. Bands are back. Rock bands, mm-hmm. all of it. Well, good. Mm-hmm. And and so I think you know, and and the electronic. Is you know, as as Nick said earlier, electronic at, at festivals plays an amazing role because you know late night, late night, that two a.m. to four a.m. Yep. You know, a, a, a pop and light show and dance music, everyone moving right. is always fun. Right. Um, and so I think it's I think it's going to continue to be a good mix between the two. I, I really like that. Yeah. The, That's- the direction that that's, that's what come. people love about that festival too. I will think. there be a holographic Tupac or Jerry Garcia? <laughs> will there be a holographic set? Dude, how are you like giving up our biggest secret? Yeah. I am a little by I am one. <laughs> what if it was Tupac and Jerry together? I'll yes. still see no ch- and then Bruce Hornsby just is he's actually there. <laughs> There's Tupac <laughs> and Jerry. <laughs> Uh, I think I, I I don't know I don't have any more questions I think we covered it Do you have anything else You feel like you we, ha- we didn't talk about or I don't think so I think we did a Did a pretty thorough job there mm-hmm. um, I mean There will be more investigations I yes. will, <laughs> I will. <laughs> And like Honestly like, Do you get bummed out When people shit on something Shit on like When you're just trying to do something new Does that bum you out Yeah I mean I, I'm human So right. You know It <laughs> It, it 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 gets a little frustrating sometimes but um like i think i might have said earlier you know like the uh one of the the best things that i saw when we announced our lineup though was you know all of the posts were so wait a second this is just summer camp with a new name yeah and i'm like I, yes exactly yeah, that's yeah. what i want you yeah. know that's that's the reaction i wanted when you saw the lineup to to be like yes this is that same thing there's going to be changes on the ground and things are going to be a little bit different but everything that you come to know and love as summer camp you can now find in soul shine just with a little different setup scale be a, a lot of fun. yeah it's scaled to scale to scale we're tightening yeah. it up we're yeah. just tightening it up we're just tightening it up but there's still a good amount like i said earlier there's still a good amount of like 
local kind of stuff, bands. I noticed you still, you know, you're still. You, you kept the same philosophy. You're still in the showing, the, showing love to the up and coming bands like yeah. you always have, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's you know that's what I wanted. And and quite honestly, I I think you know some people were were definitely getting a little frustrated with the questions about you know well what is different um, and. I wanted to get the lineup out so that people saw, hey, this part isn't changing. You know, right, the, right. the core of the music is is really going to remain centered around, you know, the the good mix of jam bands, some some great rock, some great bluegrass, some different things like that, and and mixing in the electronic. Right. And but you know now it's a lot easier, of course to talk about the the changes that are happening because everyone already has in their head, oh, it's still going to be summer camp right. at its core. Right. And that's what I wanted to make sure was was out there. Same philosophy. Same philosophy. It's to not like scale. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> kind of like uh Garth Brooks being uh David Gaines or <laughs> what? Chris <laughs> No, it's I not like no that. Idea what it's you're not doing. like that at Garth all. Garth Brooks. No, it's Chains not like that at all. Alter ego, but everyone knew it was Garth Brooks. What was that guy? Chris, Chris Gaines. Gaines. But it's not <laughs> oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> the track. I know that that was a bad. That was that was horrible. Actually, yeah, don't, disregard that. Yeah, because everybody hates <laughs> Chris Gaines. He everyone. wants everyone to like his festival. <laughs> if the worst thing that play. anyone feels is as they come and that they they got schnookered <laughs> because it's really just summer camp yeah i'm happy with that yeah, it's right. like, well, didn't you like summer camp <laughs> yeah didn't you like it yeah you liked it last year <laughs> you went 15 years in a row <laughs> yeah yeah well and you said it all um thank you so much um and i know i'm not a headliner but you know send it off for a little earlier <laughs> okay so i can get on the fest okay but <laughs> no thank you guys i i appreciate you uh you know doing this and and uh, hopefully the fans uh, appreciate getting a little better perspective yeah. on what this is all about. And yeah. I'm sure they're all going to be happy to hear you're not going to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, at least half he of them tried, will be. Though. I mean, at least half of them will be stoked. I just I'm don't not want there. them to think it's Ian's fault. No, we he tried. tried. He tried. It's not Ian. It's, uh, you got, you know, I'm getting busy. But this isn't about me. This is about summer camp. I know. I'm this just, is about soul shine. I'm trying to make him look good as possible. No, yeah. And no, no, I think what this interview helped too is like you humanized the situation that goes yeah. into making a festival. This isn't like a big machine. This is right. fucking Ian Goldberg in an, in an office making phone calls. In Peoria. Yeah, like it's 1986 yeah. again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, it's like it's not the big, big machine. This isn't this Midtown is, Manhattan. Yeah, this isn't yeah. Midtown. That is, going back to your question about the criticisms, I mean, that is one of the things that's most frustrating is, is you know, people, especially about the lineup, you know, like, they seem to think that I can just call up whoever I want and mm -hmm. tell them they're going to play my festival right. and that the artists have no say in it whatsoever. Right. Like, <laughs> right. you know, why didn't you get so-and-so or why didn't you do this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, in a lot of cases, I tried over and over and over again. And like, you know, it's not just up to me. It, it is a dance that I have to do every year of, you know, trying to get the, the artists that, that we want. And there's, several that i've still never even been able to get on the festival that i right. would, would love the chance to like who and this year we we accomplished one of the the goals that you know string cheese incident had never played the festival yeah. oh for various they've never played it that. yeah they've never played this is the first time they'll wow. they'll be at, at, at our festival and damn you know for various different reasons of course Electric Forest for the right. last 10 years being a part of that equation. We've had the conversation several times, but for whatever reason, it, it just never was able to work out. And this year we were able to make it happen. And I'm really excited about that. I love um, it. And there's various, various other ones. And people just seem to think that it's just solely up to me to be like, you know, make this happen. And right. there's, there's a lot of variables involved that aren't in my control in a lot of cases. So. Right, right, that, right. That part gets really frustrating. Right. right. Yeah. Well, keep up, keep doing the Lord's work, buddy. We're we're rooting you on. Um, I'm thinking Thank about you, so you always, and keep uh keep going, bud. You I know, this is Sam just Sam. the beginning. This is, you know, it's a new chapter. You know, it's like kind of like getting a haircut. You know, just yep. you're still the same person. You're just uh, you're just hotter now. You're tightened <laughs> up. You're just tightened up. All right, I buddy. Appreciate th that, and I'm I'm really excited for it. That that's been a fun part of this. Yeah. Is, is, you right. Know, it's rejuvenated my love for what I'm doing because it's allowed me to be creative again and and have more That's cool. uh, creative input into what we're doing. So That's awesome, right. appreciate it. Well, thanks for being on the show, bud. And um, yeah, have a blast out there. And uh, and 
try not to have too much fun in Mexico, okay? I need you hungry. Mm. I need. I can't have this like chilled out Ian Goldberg. Maybe scuba diving. Yeah, maybe you need it. This is your time. That's I know you're. So, you're always so. You know, I always like afraid to talk to you during festival season because <laughs> you're always just like stressed out. <laughs> you probably are. So yeah. take this time, take a breath, chill out, and then get out there and go kick some ass. Yep. We'll, we'll have to get you guys down to Tulum to hang out with. Oh, them. trust me, it's already in my calendar, bud. We're oh, doing we it. I think I'm bringing a couple people too. Yeah. I got to see that. I got to see that. I, heard I got to see that pad you have. I heard it's amazing. Yeah. All right, buddy. I'll see you later. Later. Thank you. That was awesome.